Podcast Top 10. Over the past few decades of home haunting, I have used a variety of different products to build props, make facades, and to create effects. However, there is one product that I keep coming back to over and over again as it fills the gap that other products don't or do, but for a much more expensive price. So for the overall versatility and price, I keep coming back to expanding foam. If you are a seasoned haunter or even a noob, let me glue you, I mean, let me clue you in on my top 10 uses of this fantastical product. Number 10, casting. For example, making numerous skulls on the cheap. For instance, if you have a mold of a skull that you made out of a milk jug or out of silicone, you can use expanding foam to crank out dozens of replicas quickly. Make sure that you use a release agent like Vaseline, and yes, gents, it does have more than one use, to ensure easy removal of the foam from the mold. Number nine, vines. No, not the defunct video hosting app, but the ones that Tarzan swings from to flex for Jane. I've used expanding foam for years to create creepy looking vines on my cemetery columns, tombstones, mausoleums, and tomb. Now, when using great stuff outdoors for long periods of time, the great stuff will dry out and crack and can start to break off over the years. Recently, I stumbled across Pond and Stone, which is designed for water and outdoor use. Even though it costs a couple of more dollars per can and it's a bit harder to find, it will save you a lot more money down the road from not having to patch up the broken off pieces every couple of years. Number eight. Have a toxic, radioactive, or biohazard scene in your haunt? Just spray on some expanding foam, paint with fluorescent green paint, and call on Toxie to save the day. Number seven. Adhesive. You will always need adhesive for gluing foam together. Foam to wood, wood to wood, hell, even gluing your fingers together. And this product is as good as it gets, especially for the latter. Quick tip, spray some foam onto the surface, push the two pieces together, then separate them, and then press them back together once again to prevent the expanding in the expanding foam. So it will only act as an adhesive. Number six, filling out props. When making full body sized props, often we need to fill in the mask, the gloves, build out the shoulders and chest, etc. And expanding foam comes to the rescue once again. Number five, making masks. Stilt Beast Studios, man, say that 10 times fast, has a few videos demonstrating the use of Loctite foam to make a skeleton and a zombie mask. Links below. Loctite foam, when fully cured, will be rigid and fairly durable. Less prone to cracking, unlike its great stuff rival. Number four, innards. Create innards that would make Granny Clampet salivate. You can use expanding foam to create brains, intestines, and other innards with ease. Just spray onto wax paper, let cure, paint red, and done. Number three, adding texture. Are you looking to create a giant spider, creepy egg sac, or rope vines? Spray some expanding foam into your gloved hands and wipe it across the surface. When it dries, it will have a bumpy, gross look to it that will add some extra nastiness to your prop. Number two, double double toil and trouble. Add some expanding foam to make your cauldron bubble. Spray some expanding foam around the rim of your witch's cauldron to create the bubbling froth overflowing from your witch's stew. Number one. And the number one use for expanding foam is absolutely, positively destroying your best clothes. I'm going now. Heaven help you. Please 
please like, subscribe, comment, and share. And don't forget to turn on notifications so you won't miss any haunt content that is dead ahead.